Talking Sports. Live every Thursday night at 8. Only on CBN TV. You're watching CVM TV. From Studio 69, this is CVM Live, the evening edition. Good evening and welcome to CVM Live. I'm Michelle Thomas. It's Friday, May 12, 2023, and we begin with major stories. The swearing-in of the two newest government appointees to the Senate got underway today, with both newcomers receiving warm welcome on both sides. Senators Abka Fitzhenley and Dr. Dana Morris Dixon committed to serving with discipline and pride in the Parliament's upper house. Nico Lewis takes us there. was among the highlights of Friday's sitting. One, a household name in the media fraternity, Abka Fitzhenley. The other, a sensation in public service and finance, Dr. Dana Morris Dixon. I, Dana Marie Elizabeth Morris Dixon, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica. I, Abka Lincoln Ramon Fitzhenley, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica. They were met with warm welcome from what some consider the more cerebral side of politics. I want to especially welcome first um, Abka, Senator Abka Fitzhenley, and I hope he doesn't mind me calling him Abka because I've known him for a very long time. And when he just entered the media landscape, and I'll say he was then just a mere wisp of the man you see before you today. We, we always enjoyed a, a good professional relationship back when I was in, in government, and, and we still do, and I look forward to the contribution he will make. He also had high expectations of Senator Morris Dixon, another Campionite, who was celebrated by government Senator Aubin Hill as much sought after in her field. There are lots of people who wanted uh, Dr. Dixon to do all kinds of things, and there's only one man, I think, in Jamaica who trumped them, and he did. <laughs> Prime Minister, the most honorable, Andrew Holness. In their response, much thanks, humility, and a commitment to doing the nation's business. I thank the Honorable Prime Minister for asking me to serve in this way. Um, it's, I know very clearly this is not about me. It is about service. I have been given a lot of tremendous opportunities in my life. And I believe it's important that all of us in here who have had all of these opportunities that so many didn't, that we use our skills and our talents to serve our country. I pray that I will serve my country very well. Thank you. And I will not make a bunch of promises. However, I will say this. I commit to the Jamaican people to my deport and energies events in this chamber right by our country. Nika Lewis, CVM Live. Meanwhile, political analyst Kevin O'Brien Chang, in reacting to the latest appointments, has described the Prime Minister as a good chess player, commending him on the latest move. Javine McLean has the story. Political commentator Kevin O'Brien Chang is lauding the recent additions to the Upper House. O'Brien Chang says appointing Dr. Dana Morris Dixon and Abka Fitzhenley is a good move on the part of the Prime Minister, noting that each will add their talent and skill to bolster the Senate. He notes that Senator Dr. Morris Dixon, in particular, will be an immediate asset based on her previous experience. She's able to do things. She helped uh, led a big transformation at JN Bank. Um, did something significant for the BOJ um, outside her specific field of training. So her mind is flexible. Um, but she was on the Partisan Education Transformation Committee. And obviously I'm an outsider, not an insider. But logic tells me that, uh, you know, she was picked to 
try to put into action the recommendation of that committee. A perfect person at the Senate level for education, according to O'Brien Chang. He adds that Senator Fitz Henley's experience as a journalist will add another dimension to government in the area of communications. Uh, Fitz Henley now, the JLP has big um, communication problems. Robert Morgan is very good as information minister, but one man can't do the job. He needs help. And Abbott Kiffith Henley is one of the most brilliant young journalists in Jamaica. He won the Young Journalist Award, he won the, the Journalist of the Year Award, and his nickname, The Breaking Boss, he had the, the news before everybody else. Terry has all the contacts, understands the field. It's a brilliant addition, if you ask me. O'Brien Chang says the Prime Minister has been strategic in his selections. So, Andrew Holness was a chess player in his younger days, apparently. And these moves are well thought out like a chess player. They're going to attack the education or, you know, try to put into practice the recommendations of the committee. And many times in Jamaica, you know, we have committees. They meet, they give recommendations, and they sit on the shelf and get dusty. This says that Andrew Owens is going to take this. Javine McLean, CVM Live. On the heels of the resignation of government senators Natalie Campbell Rodriguez and Leslie Campbell, reports surfaced alleging prominent businessman Keith Duncan will be appointed to the Senate. He has since countered those reports. Here's Natalia Clark with the update. Contrary to reports in the media, Keith Duncan will not be joining the Jamaican Senate. On Thursday, it was alleged the former president of the private sector organization of Jamaica would be appointed to the Senate on Friday. Duncan, however, released a statement on Friday dismissing those claims. He insists he has not been appointed nor has he been offered to serve in the capacity as a senator by the government of Jamaica. Duncan reiterates, however, his commitment to Jamaica's advancement. He explains he is privileged to have served in various capacities in public life under both political administrations and is committed to serving in any way that benefits the nation. He says both parties are aware of his desire to serve in an independent capacity. Among the positions he's occupied are chairman of the National National Youth Service for both the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party. Member and Chairman of the Economic Program Oversight Committee under both parties, Chair of the Divestment Committee of Cayman as Track under the PNP administration. He was also a member of the COVID-19 Economic Recovery Task Force. In this capacity, he also chaired the Local Services Committee under the JLP administration. Currently, Duncan chairs the National Information Technology Advisory Committee to the Minister of Science, Energy and Technology. In the statement, he says he will continue to serve in the public's interest under any administration as an independent thinker. The Senate, on the other hand, did however see two new appointments on Friday, former journalist Apka Fitzhenley and Dr. Dana Morris Dixon. Natalia Clark for CVM Live. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation has collaborated with the JCF to tackle the issue of illegal garages operating in the corporate area. The KCMC says they're working diligently to tackle the issue. We have more from Javine McLean. Municipal Police Officer Dwayne Anderson and his team from the Municipal Corporation were out in their numbers on Friday to rid the corporate area of illegal garages. He notes the collaborative effort involves a number of police divisions within the corporate area. He explained to our news team how the operation has been proceeding. Over a number of days, it spanned from last week, we would have removed or seized over 100 motor vehicles of all different sizes. What we have also recognized that these vehicles store underneath them a lot of debris, rats, vermins. Whilst conducting these operations, we encode a lot of interference or challenges where persons normally try to prevent us from removing these vehicles, as you can see. Anderson believes the protection of the most vulnerable groups within the municipality is of primary importance. We are ever relentless and will endeavor to ensure that the Kingston and St. Andrew municipality will be a place for everyone to go about freely and not be impeded. We consider our children, our elderly folks, and our special aid persons who are normally the person that are impeded 
We consider them, therefore, we continue to do this drive. He also sent a stern warning to a particular garage operating in the corporate area. I will warn other areas such as Henderson Road, other adjoining areas of that, in the Olympic Gardens area, will be coming soon to disrupt your activities. It is best that you comply now or else face the consequences of impounding the vehicles and you have to pay that hefty sum. He adds that some of the illegal garages also harbor vehicles that are used for criminal activity. He says the KSMC is working diligently to ensure that the illegal garages are closed down permanently. Javin McLean, CVM Live. Jamaica is grappling with a concerning trend of motorcycle accidents which sometimes end in fatalities. This reality is no stranger to headlines in Jamaica as an alarming number of lives have been lost in recent years. Similarly and unfortunately, such was the case in St. Thomas on Thursday. Here's Natalia Clark. Another young life was cut short on Thursday in a motorcycle accident in St. Thomas. The victim, 20-year-old Austin Williams of Cheswick in the parish, was reportedly the passenger on the motorcycle. CVM Live understands around 9.30 in the morning, a truck and the bike was traveling in opposite directions along the Golden Grove main road. The speeding bike was, however, in the middle of the road. In an attempt to avoid a collision, the driver of the motorcycle swerved from the truck and lost control of the vehicle. Williams subsequently collided with a tool pan affixed to the truck. He, along with the driver, was rushed to the Princess Margaret Hospital, where the driver was treated and released. Williams was pronounced dead. Williams was an ex-member of the Jamaica Defense Force and is described as hard-working by counselor for the Dalvey Division, Michael McLeod. He's a you know, brother just joined the Army, graduated and in, in January of this year. And the two little youth that just work very hard to reach where they reach because the community is just at a way by themselves. They don't give trouble, they don't give no problem. The councillor also extends his sympathies. My sympathy goes out to the family and friends who are um, associated with um, Sir Williams. And any further I do, I will keep in touch with the family. Austin Williams' unfortunate death brings the total road fatalities in St. Thomas to seven for 2023. This incident also serves as a stark reminder of the grave consequences of speeding and the importance of adhering to traffic regulations. Natalia Clark for CVM Live. Women and girls face the possibility of being left behind in the technology revolution if they're not encouraged to learn their needed digital skills. That's why Telecom's provider Flo, in hosting its inaugural Girls in ICT Day recently, has taken the initiative to include women in the training and preparation for future tech roles. Scores of students, all girls, were engaged with stakeholders to learn how they can carve a niche in the job market to come. Nico Lewis reports. At the dawn of a new age, the age of technology blooming with artificial intelligence, robotics and new or evolving jobs, females must be made ready or face being left behind. However, one local telecoms entity all too familiar with the need for preparation and change is fiercely pushing to equip and inspire the nation's girls for this shift. Today's expo was born out of Flo's mission to drive equality, diversity, and inclusion in the ICT space. We recognize, like the rest of the world, how underrepresented women are in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. They said women are less likely to pursue careers in STEM, often due to fear and lack of exposure and to interesting opportunities within the field. Studies also indicate that women who read for degrees in these areas are more likely to leave the field than men and those who stay. Price notes the rapid growth in artificial intelligence applications including chat GPT in recent times and examines the changing job market. One of the most important jobs that you will see in the future and in the present right now that's required is that of a prompt engineer. Anybody knows a prompt engineer? Prompt engineers are those people, let me put it simply, who speak with AI 
to give it the right level of instructions in order to create the outcomes that you desire. It's one of the most important and sought after jobs now in AI. It's one of those careers that I know that you will all be a part of that ecosystem. The telecom's boss sees it as part of his duty to help prepare the girls for the rapidly changing future. We are excited about the increased capabilities of technology and the new opportunities that are ushered in by these developments. As technology evolves, so too will the type of skills that are needed by the market. Traditional roles such as pilots and doctors will continue to be in demand. However, there's also going to be need for new roles to be filled, such as cloud architects, big data scientists, blockchain analysts, senior product managers for Google Maps, <laughs> and the list goes on. Prompt engineers, so many disciplines out there. Nika Lewis, CVM Live. Stay with us, Major Stories will return after this break. The real disaster is being unprepared. While we can't stop natural disaster from occurring, we can prepare for them to help mitigate the loss and lower the cost to the country. It all starts with proper financing to fund measures that will help us better prepare for and recover from natural disasters. The National Natural Disaster Risk Financing Policy is our first step to creating a more resilient Jamaica. Play your part in helping us become rock solid and ready. For more info on the National Natural Disaster Risk Financing Policy, visit mof.gov.jp. AM. It's our 64th anniversary, and at Quartz, we're giving you 64 reasons to shop and save. From May 12th to 15th, get up to 64% off select items. Plus, get a free gift with select purchases. Pay nothing down all day, every day on 6 to 48 months credit. Shop now and save on bedroom pieces, appliances, TVs, office pieces, mattresses, and AKT bikes. It's our 64th anniversary, and we're giving you 64 reasons to shop and save at Quartz. Conditions apply. Quartz, bringing value home. Take caution when crossing the road. Don't be a victim. Know the road code. A message from the Ministry of Transport and Mining. Critical illness is real. Cancer is real. Heart attack and stroke are real. Pregnancy complication is real. Critical illnesses and pregnancy complications can turn a woman's life upside down. Total Woman Insurance Plan gives me real insurance protection for up to 15 major critical illnesses and pregnancy complication coverage. Get real protection with Total Woman Insurance Plan from Sajikur Life. So, Bonnie, you renew your road license yet? Babes, the road have me away. I can't even find time, but you know money for me. But see, I shall owe them money the back for late fee and record fee when you still make your road less expire for you. Well, transport authority so we can apply online. And that may go to now. Operators of public passenger vehicles and to commercial carriers, renew your road licenses now. A message from the Transport Authority. Call us 876-926-8912. The Premier League on Sea Sports just got better. Win your share of up to 15,000 US dollars when you play CPIC. Predict the winning teams, final scores, and score difference, and a piece of the pie could be yours. Compete for the title of CPIC champion and put your Premier League knowledge to the test. With millions up for grabs, top the table and take home the cash. Visit seasports.win today and log your predictions. Sea Sports, the best way to see sports. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres will be traveling to Jamaica on Sunday to meet with Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Monday, May 15. They'll be discussing a wide range of issues impacting the island. It's the current Secretary General's first official visit to Jamaica and the second official visit by the leader of the UN since 1963. 
We will discuss a wide range of issues, including the impact of the climate crisis in the Caribbean and the upcoming midterm review of the global framework for disaster risk reduction. We will also discuss the situation in Haiti and how to involve the international community more strongly, as well as Jamaica's uh, leadership in efforts to reform the global financial architecture so that developing countries, including middle-income countries, can restructure and sustainably manage debt as well as access technology and finance at affordable rates so as to invest for growth and inclusive sustainable development. Jamaica, as you know, is the co-chair of the Group of Friends on Financing for Development alongside Canada. And we close major stories with news from overseas. Here's regional and international news. We begin with news in the region. At least one of the largest church groups in Barbados is voicing support for the government's recently launched school nutrition policy. President of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Anthony Hall, gave officials the thumbs up for the measures. More from CBC News Barbados. We would like to thank all of Barbados to, for supporting us over the years with our health ministry. And we would like to indicate that we embrace even what the government has been doing recently with the nutrition policy that it has brought to the schools in Barbados. It is right in keeping with a philosophy that will help people not only to be very spiritual, but to be very healthy and to be good citizens um, of our nation, Barbados. In Belize, the mandate of the People's Constitution Committee includes an in-depth look at the likelihood of a transition away from the monarchy. The passing of the Queen of England in 2022 gave rise to public disclosure on the topic of the realm and Belize's place within the Commonwealth. More from Belize News. As much as I would like for the head of state to be uh, the prime minister or president, whatever, the people will decide. I believe the monarch should have gone when we got our independence. But it did not happen that way. We are here now, and it is a decision that should be made at a referendum. On the international scene, controversial migration policy in the U.S. has expired and officials are warning about a potential surge in immigrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. Officials have said that Title 42 is no longer in effect. Tens of thousands of people could try to cross over. Here's the BBC. Here in downtown El Paso, just a stone's throw away from one of the many border crossings, you can see it's very quiet here at the moment. In recent months, there have been hundreds of migrants living on the streets here. They have been cleared now, and that's all part of the efforts to prepare for the surge in numbers of people coming across. Uh, the problem is when there is a change of policy or a rumor of a change of policy at the border, there is a huge amount of confusion on the other side where tens of thousands of people are waiting to come in. In recent days, we've seen a spike in the numbers already with Customs and Border Patrol saying that they've encountered more than 10,000 people per day this week trying to get across. Uh, we've been speaking to a few of those who made it this far. The government thinks that I'm part of the gangs, and the gangs think that I'm being snitching on them to the government. I left because my life was in danger. Well, as Title 42 is lifted, different rules and restrictions will come into play, one of which is if migrants are found to have entered the United States illegally and don't have a credible case for seeking asylum here, they won't just be deported, they'll be banned from re-entering for some five years. That's regional and international news. I'm Javi McKean. And that's where we end major stories. Now for Friday sports feature, The Winner's Edge. I want when we look back five years from now, that we will also be able to say that the policy initiatives for the horse racing industry that I've spoken about tonight are evident to all Jamaicans as being tremendously successful. The rest, ladies and gentlemen, is up to you. Thank you and good evening. Now that the government has lifted the GCT on the importation of horses, the local horse racing industry will benefit in a big way. Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association President Howard Hamilton was quick to point out that the long overdue adjustment in purses is still a major concern for stakeholders. We are having constant dialogue with promoters. Right now we are in discussions about an adjustment in purses which a formula has been arrived at 
and we are arguing about the figures that should be, should be the basis for, the, for calculating that formula. Um, we have had to call an arbitrator because our figures differ from the promoter's figures, and we are hoping that we, that will come to, to, to a mutually satisfactory resolution as quickly as possible, because we need that adjustment to, to, to try and help reduce some of the costs in training. And what is the overall cost to maintain the horses? You know, it costs us nearly $1.86 billion per year to keep the 1,300 horses at the racetrack, feeding them, keeping and caring them, the veterinary services and all those other things that have to be added in. And to get a return of only $700 million is not equitable. So we're trying to see how best we can remove that disparity and get something more equitable distributed to the grooms, the trainers, the owners, the jockeys and the breeders, who are the mainstay of the industry. They are the stakeholders, but in fact they are the shareholders of the, breeding, of, of the racing industry. It is their efforts which bring about the surpluses that may be generated, and we want an equitable distribution of those surpluses, wherever that may come from. But where will the promoters get the extra income from? There's a lot of similar cars racing being done now. Whenever our jockey or our horse goes on a racetrack, we deserve to earn something from their efforts. And this is the discussion we're having now with the promoting company about how best we can make that how best we can make that distribution more equitable. With an operating cost of $1.86 billion against a $700 million return, how are the owners coping? We don't. That's the problem we have. We don't. A lot of us are doing it from, from our own disposable income, and those with the disposable income in the industry are getting less and less. Um, people claim they're doing it because of love and because we love the sport. That's fine, but there's, a, there's an element which comes into you won't have to start covering his expenses to make that love even more meaningful. Join us after the break for a live discussion segment with host Dr. Nadine Spence. Everything reminds you of Burger King, giving you all kind of mouthwater and flashbacks. Then all you can think of is lunch, giving to a sweet, crunchy barbecue chicken sandwich with its tangy barbecue sauce, crispy onions, or a perfectly made spicy flaming cheeseburger, two juicy flame grilled patties, screaming hot jalapenos, and melty cheese with medium fries and soda. Stop daydreaming because taste rules your way at Burger King, the best tasting burger on the sun. OJ's Crime Stop Jamaica Unsolved. 32 year old Wesley Trench, sales rep, Carreras Group Limited, was stabbed to death at 2 a.m. Saturday, February 11, 2023, in Priory St. Anne near the traffic light. Citizens heard calls for help, but it wasn't until 5 a.m. that the body of Wesley Trench was found in a pool of blood beside his grey Hyundai Creta. Crime Stop and concerned family members are offering a total reward of $500,000 for information leading to an arrest and charge. Call Crime Stop Jamaica 311. Solving crime pays. Nah, click on your link for my lick of bread. I pre that, that slot, bro. We don't need that. And the next thing, them type of song, they are listening online. What kind of thing that some big man pose up on them profile and a put chat to a small child. Watch yourself on social media when you are post boxes. No, do not do a while. What if your little brother said a post, yeah? What if your bro dead in another crime video, yeah? What if your little sister fe take a one pick and it a put up everywhere like it's a poster? Before me share the post the pic, I ask myself what if, what if I Nah comment, I nah go click B For me ask what if, what if I Nah comment, I nah go click B For me ask what if, what if so be For you share the post the link Just ask yourself what if, what if yeah. When you're there online Make it a new day of the rhyme Keep up with the time Broadcasting commission I remind you Honey, you 
This Mother's Day, Sunday, May 14, it's Red Rose for Gregory. A dedication to mothers at Hope Gardens Kingston. Featuring prolific hit makers, The Manhattan with Cheryl Alston and Supreme vocalist Denise Williams in her final performance. Also starring J.C. Lodge, Itana, Errol Dunkley, Robert Minot, Hezron, and more. Get tickets online at FirstLineJA.com. All branches of Fontana Pharmacy, York Pharmacy, Genius Pharmacy, and Richard Lee's Liquor Center. Gates open 4 p.m., showtime 6 p.m. Take mom to Red Rose for Gregory this Mother's Day. A wing is a win. Enjoy a KFC Hot Wings 5-piece combo or 25-piece party bucket today. The time by KFC is... 7.30. Welcome to our live discussion. I'm Nadine Spence. Jamaica's ambition to grow and diversify exports is again in focus, with data indicating that the trade deficit continues to widen. Following the successful staging of the Caribbean's largest trade show, Expo 2023, under the theme Connecting the World to Jamaica, we are pleased to be joined by some of its key stakeholders to provide insight into how Jamaican exports can get to the next level. With us via Zoom, we have John Mafood, who is president of the Jamaica Manu Manufacturers and Exporters Association, and in studio, Shane Angus, interim vice president of export at Jampro. Welcome to both of you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I'll, I'll, I'll start with you, Shane. Mm -hmm. um, this matter of uh, Jamaica, the gap widening between exports uh, in, in our in, in, in on the matter of our of of Jamaican exports, mm -hmm. right? Import against export, yes. Import against export, yeah. Mm. What is what do you think is happening there? And is the is first of all, it, has it caused Jampro to raise its eyebrows, to be alarmed, to want to seek answers as to what is happening? Um, it has always been our focus, um, and we have tried on in, on many fronts to try and address the issue where we can. Um, there are two sides. We try to help grow the exports, and on the, on the other end. We try to see if we can get investments to come in to help us to boost our exports as well. So it has, it has always been a focus and now we are more focusing on getting exports out to see how we can close that gap and to also produce more locally, help companies produce more locally to reduce the imports on, on the other front. Jamba Food, what is happening in, in respect of our, our um, local uh, production chain? Um, what, what is happening in Jamaica? Why aren't we producing enough for export? Is, is it that we're not producing enough? Are we sliding back in production? What is happening with us here from your perspective? Um, you know, Jamaica doesn't have a very uh, large and robust um, uh, export sector. Uh, and, and the manufacturing sector is relatively small. Um, coming from a high of about 20% of GDP to the current 8%. And historically, the, the uh, demise of manufacturing was due to um, many bad decisions by previous governments that caused a flight of manufacturers and, and closure of manufacturers. Today, you know, our aim is to try to re revive those, uh, reverse those those negative uh, situations. And I, I would say to you also, the Minister of Industry and Commerce is very strong advocate for growing up export. And we are partnering with him and with, with that ministry and JAMPRO to stimulate um, uh, the industry and to uh, provide opportunities for our manufacturers to export. And with particular, in my mind, with particular emphasis on exporting to our telecom neighbors. And uh, that was part of the reason for this expo. Uh, we hadn't had one since 2018, and we felt this was a good time to sort of kickstart uh, the, the, the thrust in manufacturing. 
Has this expo helped at all? I mean, and did the, the three year, how, how long haven't we had it? Three, four, Three, five years? Five years. Has, yes. how, did, you know, could that be part of what happened to cause the gap between our imports and exports to widen? And, and will this change anything significantly? I, I wouldn't say that. There are other things that were happening at the same <coughs> time. One thing we have to look at, one of our major exports at the time was alumina, and that is actually down. That accounted for a significant portion of what we exported. But the trade, this, this event, Expo Jamaica, is indeed was well anticipated by many of our buyers. They wanted to see what's new, what Jamaica had to offer. They want to come in, they wanted to expand their portfolios in international markets. So this expo is something we're looking forward to actually, in the short term, help us to grow some exports. Uh, and John, COVID would have had an impact on not just our ability to have the, the expo, to host the expo, but also on our productive capacity in respect of um, producing for export. How significant was that in terms of setting back that drive to, you know, once again fixing the manufacturing sector and getting us back to the point where we are closing the gap? Um, we have to be careful, of course, about, you know, making excuses, but certainly COVID and the, um, the restrictions on travel uh, made it difficult for manufacturers who wanted to export to go abroad and to seek new customers. But at the same time, I think it opened the eyes of uh, the government and, and uh, manufacturers themselves that we are very, um, you know, the, the problems with shipments from China and so on indicated, uh, the shortages indicated we have to be very cognizant of the need to export and trade with our um, CARICOM customers and the uh, Central American customers and, and, uh, and the U.S. We are a small group of vulnerable countries and it's critical that we start trading among ourselves instead of depending on China and other countries in the Far East where the shipping time is very long. So, you know, and, and then of course the the problems that occurred with um, delays in receiving raw materials, the increase in shipping costs, all of that made it difficult. And remember, when you're looking at the trade deficit, although exports have gone up, uh, what has really hurt, um, hurt us in terms of that deficit is the significant increase in the price of oil. We're spending over $2 billion US a year in that and the increase in grains and other cereals, which has driven up the price of um, uh, the, 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 the amount we spend on imports. Sports. We, we have heard in the last couple of months, Shane, a lot of conversations about how the war in Ukraine, COVID-19, <clears throat> the price of oil mm -hmm. have impacted on commodity prices, perhaps our ability to produce more efficiently at a, a you know, what, but, but apart from that, what are the factors within Jamaica itself? What are the things happening in Jamaica that is preventing us from really um, expanding our import capacity and doing what we need to do to perhaps not close the gap, but certainly bring it to a, a place where we, it's not as bad as we're contemplating it now? So what we have found is really there are a lot of challenges in our economy itself. Um, a lot of our manufacturers and producers, um, they tend to lack access to capital, and that is a significant um, significant hit on them not having the capital to expand and to meet the demands internationally. So we actually try to help by getting investors to look at the different sectors. So those things I believe they're also in terms of farming capacity, access to more farmlands, um, irrigation, better programs in place. Uh, so those things are some of the challenges we have to overcome in order for us to meet the short-term um, demand, uh, uh, to fill that short-term gap. Other things we, we find is that um, there are some other restrictions. We have to get a, a lot of regulations, get over a lot of regulations in other jurisdictions to get our products out. And those things we are working on significantly to increase the, the export. John, a lot, a lot of the times when you talk about closing the export-import gap, we talk a lot about building our capacity or, or extending our internal capacity for export. What are we doing? Is there a way that we can operate on the export side in terms of what we bring in that also bol bolsters our or export capacity or, or local consumption capacity? For example, are we, are we importing too much of the things that we already have here? Well, 
before I answer that, let me let me also mention to you, you know, when when uh, when the um, the imports go up, uh, that part of that is due to the import of increased import of raw materials for the manufacturing sector to provide goods to the hotel sector. So, you know, in 2022 and, and so far in 2023, there has been a significant increase in tourist arrivals and um, income from tourism. Um, the manufacturers locally supply those hotels, but they have to bring in the raw material. So while the import data shows that imports are up, in effect, part of the answer, too, is that the manufacturers are producing for hotels and that those sales don't count in the export data. So we, we have to also be cognizant of that. Um, and, and it's not all bad news when, when um, the import of raw materials go up, because that means we're not only supplying local consumption, but the hotel industry and exports. Uh, as far as your question about uh, it sounds like it's it, it more to do with um, import substitution, I think. Um, and when I look at the products, for instance, there was a discussion the other day on on, um, on the radio about um, the cost of goods um, and the impact of inflation and why the cost of goods have not gone up, gone down. And I made the comment, and I and I still make it today, that generally speaking, locally made goods are cheaper than imported goods of the same type and quality. And our Jamaican consumers don't pay much attention to the fact that um, they should be looking at supporting manufacturers locally. They should not be just buying name brands and so on, but they should look at quality and, and try to support local manufacturers. And those products that they buy locally Will, will reduce the amounts of imports of those similar items made abroad. Let me bring Shane in on this. You wanted to say something. Yeah, I just want to add that um, following what John said, you mentioned capacity. Um, one other thing about us, we try to help our exporters to expand their capacity. We have a program in house called Export Max, where we try to assess the readiness of a lot of our companies locally to see where the gaps are, and we run them through a program to help them fill those gaps and to help them better prepared for the international market. So there's a lot of work happening on the, the back end to get our manufacturers and our exporters to that level. So the expo has come and gone and I'm sure that a lot of good things came out of it from what I hear. I had planned to go myself but didn't get to make it there, John. What did you see as some of the, let, let me start with you, Shane. What were some of the most promising, um, at youth, you know, opportunities coming out of the expo? Um, so I, I also work in the U.S. market and I've seen a trend happening and what you find is um, importers or persons in the market are looking for innovative products. We didn't see quite a bit of innovation but we see diversity in a lot of our products that we have, something that's new and those are things that the distributors abroad are looking at, something that gives them an advantage on the shelf. So we believe that coming out of this we had 800 buyers registered. We, our target was 600 and we got 800. And coming out of this, we had 350 um, international buyers. So we're expecting the follow-up to result in us seeing a lot more persons buying a lot more things. And these are buyers who are connecting to Jamaican producers right yes, on the spot? Yes, right on the spot. Um, and buyers connected right on the spot and serving large markets abroad. So yes, we had a lot of delegation in. So we're expecting to see the, in, the, in the near future, after we have finished our survey to understand what took place, um, quite a bit of increase in, in sales to a lot of these companies and hopefully a lot of the products, new products entering the market. John, did you think the expo shifted the needle significantly? Well, you know, it takes time. Um, when you, when a manufacturer meets a, um, a buyer for the first time, there is a period of discussion, a period of um, understanding each other's need, needs, looking at prices, and it, it, it generally takes, you know, four to eight months to generate um, uh, business. Some of it is immediate, but uh, some of it takes time and persistence. Um, I, I would also mention to you that um, in that expo we had 40 what we call um, small manufacturers uh, displaying and selling their goods for the first time. 
Um, I will also mention that um, in the month of July coming up, we have uh, another fairly large uh, show called Christmas in July, which where we have about 200 small manufacturers ex exposing their products to um, uh, um, gift shops and, and local buyers and institutional buyers. And it's usually a lot of fun and interesting to see the small manufacturers. So I encourage your viewers to look out for that as well. Next. After this expo, where, where does Jampro take the, cap, the sector next? Um, so firstly for us, we are doing our, our activities after the event. One is a massive survey that we're trying to gather the information from the buyers who are here to see what do they like, what do they want to buy, if not, if they want new, new suppliers. So we're going through that process. And now we're looking at different the, all the sectors. Um, how can we expand in all the sectors as usual and finding opportunities for our producers and our exporters? Thank you. Uh, well, um, what, what are the, the new opportunities you think opening up in terms of creating niche markets? Is it, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing Lisa Hanna said Jamaica should go luxury items. Is that, is that what we should focus on? Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff we can look at. That might be one area as well. But there's quite a bit of diversity in other different sectors. I know one of the big things for export now is limestone. It's a huge thing and we're looking to push that a lot. So, I mean, there's quite a bit of stuff we have to look at to see how best we can grow from there. All right. Thank you both very much for joining us this evening on our discussion segment. We now go for a break and when we come back, we have our sports package. The Premier League on C Sports just got better. Win your share of up to 15,000 US dollars when you play CPIC. Predict the winning teams, final scores, and score difference, and a piece of the pie could be yours. Compete for the title of CPIC champion and put your Premier League knowledge to the test. With millions up for grabs, top the table and take home the cash. Visit csports.win today and log your predictions. Csport, the best way to see sports. Labor Day 2023, that I decree. Just mark down the date. Tuesday, May 23. Right time to plant a tree. Start to weed out the place. Grab a last, grab a shovel, make we green up this case. Fruit, fruit tree, shade tree, make we plant it there. It no matter if it big or if it little, yeah. Ready up, listen and follow me there. Make us some 99.9% .9 of shade where they bought from the tree, them they round ya. Yeah. Big up the people who plant up the trees years ago. Now we know, say the action, the wiser. More tree food security. I run up, go on in that day, I go plant a tree, I make it come up. She did a go give in the summer, and I go burn up. We a plant up the tree, so we environment a turn up. This Labor Day, May 23, plant a tree for life. Promoting climate change, food security, and road safety. A message from the Labor Day Secretariat. Papa Jesus, insurance gone up again? Go, go faster. It gets our insurance. Driver, let's go. Do you really want to stick with the same old insurer? For the first time in Jamaica, taxis, minibuses, coasters, whatever you drive, MIBinsure.com will find you an insurer who will slash your premium by up to 60%. They all claim to save you money, but only MIBinsure actually can. Switch to MIBinsure.com today and save serious money. Many of our brothers and sisters lose hope when diagnosed with HIV. Some lose their will to continue being a part of society. Others are despaired by the challenges of keeping up with their treatment. We understand. But remember, people with HIV live normal and progressive lives every day. You can too if you get back on track with your HIV treatment. Live for you, live for someone, live for something. Get back on track, get back to life. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. AnyBet is Jamaica's premier company for in-person or online betting in Jamaica with more than 40 locations nationwide. Enjoy more games, more bets, and more winnings at AnyBet.com with access to the widest range of products to place your bets including football, cricket, dog racing, and a host of exciting instant games that offer some of the best odds available. Chances are there's an AnyBet location near you. Must be 18 years and older. AnyBet, your best bet. This week in Friday Night Live, we present an ode to mothers with Regina Bell in concerts. <laughs> Along 
alongside the queen of reggae, Marcia Griffiths, George Nooks, and Glenn Washington. It's a pre-Mother's Day concert you don't want to miss. That's this Friday, 8 p.m., only on CVM-TV.